Brynn Hare from the Legislative Council. And um, as the chair mentioned at the at the last meeting of the committee on H57, um, you heard from the Vermont Medical Society, and um, I had a request to prepare an amendment that addressed um, the scope of practice issue that was raised during that testimony. And you can see that amendment here in draft 1.1. It's, um, it would be striking the entirety of section one, which is the legislative intent section, and replacing it with this language. Um, the language in yellow is new. Um, the rest of it is the same as the version that passed the house. So you can see that the changes provide that currently Vermont does not impose legal restrictions on the right to abortion. That's changed from currently Vermont does not restrict the right to abortion. And then the addition of the sentence, healthcare practitioners providing abortion care in Vermont make determinations regarding the provision of safe and legal abortion within the scope of their practice and license and in accordance with the relevant standards of medical practice and guiding ethical principles. And then there's a small change to the beginning of the next sentence, which is just that the General Assembly intends this act to safeguard these existing rights. And that change is intended to reflect um, the scope of those rights as curtailed by that second sentence. And then the remainder of the legislative intent section is the same, and that's the provision that it's not intended to interfere with um, the legislative power of the legislature or the judicial power of the, judi of the judiciary or to contravene the federal partial birth abortion ban act. Senator, we asked, uh, as we asked, um, discussed on Friday, um, to ha have some change made to the intent section of H57. And so over the weekend, Bryn drafted the language that's in front of you. And I'm going to ask you to go through it one more time so that we're clear and so that you've had an opportunity to hear what the changes are in that section on the bill. So do you mind, Bryn, just going through one more time? Sure. Repetition serves us really well in here. Absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned to the committee, the changes, so this replaces section one, the legislative intent section, just strikes it and replaces it entirely. But only what's in yellow is um, our reflect language changes from the version that was passed by the House. So the change in the first sentence is that currently Vermont does not impose legal restrictions on the right to abortion. That's a change from currently Vermont does not restrict the right to abortion. So that's intended to more accurately reflect that um, there are not legal restrictions imposed on, on this right. There may be restrictions within the medical practice that exist. And then the second, the addition of the second sentence, healthcare practitioners providing abortion care in Vermont make determinations regarding the provision of safe and legal abortion within the scope of their practice and license and, and in accordance with the relevant standards of medical practice and guiding ethical principles. Um, that is a new sentence. And then the minor change to the third sentence is that the General Assembly intends this act to safeguard these existing rights, um, which reflects the, um, the scope of those rights as more narrowly defined by the first two sentences. <coughs> good. Yeah, OK, so far, it's good. good. <coughs> OK. Um, so um, what, what I think I would like to do with this is to allow for you to consider it overnight, and we'll come back to it tomorrow. Um, and then we can talk about um, where we are with the bill. OK? All right. 
that didn't take as much time as I thought. Where did all the H 530 go? Do you want me to make Katie's around? That's great. Will this change be going up online too? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, no, we've seen it, we put it online. Thank you, Brim. Today. There's nothing we can do about it. Do you, well, so why don't you worse. share with us what you have? I know that we, we've talked on Friday. <laughs> Rich, Rich Westman and I both communicated with Katie over the weekend, and then we had a short meeting this morning so we can try to get um, a semblance of a bill together. Katie McLean, Office of Legislative Council for the Record. So I did put in put a new draft together with changes from this morning. Wow. And I think I can just hit send to Maya. I just posted it. Great. momentarily. So we have draft 1.2. Okay. Um, it legislative intent. There's no changes to that section. The second change has to do with CCFAP. It's in the green books and there haven't been any changes to that section. The changes start on page three, section three. This is the CCFAP appropriation um, for fiscal year 2020. So we still have the 1.25 restoring the base. And then the change here is a 4.9 million appropriation instead of the 6.9 million appropriation. And so this and this puts the market rates at 20, so it keeps it at 2017 for, for the kids and But it, and then it bifurcates the um, preschool and school age. Okay. So for uh, preschool age children, the market rate is 2012. And for school age, it's 2010. Well, that's the stuff on page four. That's on page four, right. yeah. So that is that change. Um, section four is the language about the existing stabilization grants. We're keeping that language that says that those grants are going away, that's 2.5 million. And instead, there's a new grant program being created on page five, section 4A. And this is an ongoing uh, program, grant program, and it's an infant and toddler child care provider grant. Uh, the new language says that there is established this new infant and toddler child care provider grant administered by the division for the purpose of enhancing reimbursement rates to child care providers serving infants and toddlers in underserved areas of the state. The division is to award grants to center-based child care programs and family child care homes that participate in the STARS program in accordance with the formula set forth in subsection B. In B, it says that the division is to calculate eligibility for infant and toddler provider grants on a quarterly basis. And in determining the eligibility, the division is to consider the average number of enrollees in center-based child care program and family child care homes receiving CCFAP subsidy, and also the average number of infants and toddlers enrolled in the center-based child care program or family child care home. The top of page six, subsection C, the division is to provide grants pursuant to this section as funds allow. Center-based child care programs or family child care homes receiving a grant shall remain in compliance with the division's rules, continue participation in STARS, and maintain high enrollment of children receiving a CCFAP subsidy. <coughs> so that's the ongoing language. And then the appropriation for FY20 is in section 4B. 1.25 is appropriated from the general fund to the division for the purpose of funding this new provider grant. The next change has to do with the IT investment. Section five um, is mostly the same. Uh, the only change that didn't get uh, bolded is at the top of page seven, uh, subdivision one. It had read a, a project plan and timeline, and now reads an initial project plan and timeline. 
And then in section 5A, um, there's a few changes. First, in fiscal year 2020, we have we still have the same thing that you looked at last week, 500,000 appropriated um, to begin. It used to say implementation of the project. Now it says development of the project plan that's established pursuant to section 5. And then there's new language, subsection B in fiscal year 2020, 1 million is appropriated one time from the general fund to the division to begin implementation of the plan. And then any unused funds from either the CCVAP appropriation or from the $500,000 in subsection A um, shall be reserved to begin implementation pursuant to section five. The next set of changes. So that means there's a total of $1.5 million for the IT program that we're suggesting here. Yes. Okay. 500000 is ongoing, I believe, and the $1 million is one time. Right. Okay. To no one. And that's held in reserve until. Yeah. So the next uh, set of changes have to do with the various child care provider incentives we have been looking at as it came over from the house. So there's a scholarship program and a loan repayment program. What I've done is I've deleted section six and seven of the bill um, to make it easier to compare the house version and the Senate version if we ever get there. But se section six had contained the scholarship and uh, repayment. And then section seven, was the um, the appropriation? Oh, we're obviously that. listening to our conversation. <laughs> if we ever get there, <laughs> that's succeeding like a summer in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Instead of section six and seven, section seven A creates a new grant incentivizing the child care profession. So this language kind of takes a step back and makes money available for a variety of programs that <laughs> would incentivize child care providers to enter and stay in the field. So in fiscal year 2020, 300,000 is appropriated from the general fund to the division for the purpose of establishing an incentive program that fosters an interest in the child care profession among students, including students participating in adult education. That's something you talked about last Friday. The incentive program shall provide grants to fund a combination of paid internship opportunities, scholarships, and hiring bonuses for child care providers employed at a regulated, privately operated, either center-based program or family child care home. In subsection B, the division is to administer the incentive program set forth uh, in the section and adopt policies, procedures, and guidelines for the implementation. Grants are available on a first come first serve basis until the funds are depleted. And in section, subsection C, it says that an individual cannot simultaneously receive funds from the Department of Labor, Vermont Department of Labor, to complete a paid internship in a regulated privately operated child care home or center based program while they're receiving funds pursuant to this section. Okay, remind me, this is one time? This is one time money. And then in, there's a new, page nine, there's a new section 7B. This has to do with the technical centers. We had a conversation about this last <coughs> Friday. In fiscal year 2020, 350,000 is appropriated from the child, uh, excuse me, is appropriated from the general fund to the child development division to facilitate the implementation of the Council for Professional Regulations Child Development Associate Credential Curriculum and Technical Centers throughout the state. So that's to help get the technical centers caught up to speed and rolling out this curriculum throughout all of the technical centers. So, what, so wait, though. Mm -hmm. It won't cost that much to roll it out from the technical centers. So if we could know how much, there's care of this. We don't know how much to invest in uh, technical center development uh, or finalizing this credential program. If we did, then we could take the rest of it and put it into implementation and providing funds. So I guess my question is, does 7B um, require or incentivize the tech centers to participate? I think there were discussions about 
providing some incentives for them. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Education is a, the, the Department of Education is 100 percent behind the re a requirement at this point. It's um, not saying that the technical centers must implement it. It's saying the money can facilitate to facilitate the implementation. So it's money to the division to help. I would mainly use it as some technical assistance to them, and uh, and maybe uh, and maybe incentives for them to participate. <coughs> Yes. Okay. But then the, the other part of the, the money is to reward and provide funds for folks who have the certificate and then are employed. Or that's 7A, right? So that, that was eliminated this morning that you had to have a tie-in. We don't want to eliminate it unless it, we want, we, what we want is two steps. We mm -hmm. want to have a step for, if you already have people who have the certificate, mm -hmm. apparently they do in Northeast Kingdom or somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So if they have that certificate, then we want to be able to provide uh, an incentive for them to continue to work in or to have a job or an internship. So there's, Tell me about that. there's still language about having intern, paid internship opportunities or scholarship to continue your study or a hiring bonus, but it's not, the, the conversation was about um, stepping back from specific parameters around those programs and instead. So, um, so the $350,000 this year, mm -hmm. that's not going to, it's not going to cost that much to mm -hmm. do what's here. So there's more than we need here. Mm -hmm. So will that go up to 7A for those people with certificates? How will the excess, how do we decide we put that in? So it, the, the conversation was about stepping back from the specific program parameters, but what you could do That's in is, 7A. You, yes, what okay. you could do in 7B is add a subsection B and say any unused funds um, will go towards the programs, the grant program in 7A, um, and you could either just leave it general, any of the programs in 7A, or specific and tie it to people who have completed the, um, the technical center's curriculum. I think the goal was to tie it in some way, at okay. least get a, a portion of this to achieving a certificate. So that to, to, to encourage folks to A, go through the program in the first place, and then B, um, to, to get a job okay. at the so, center. So we'll say in subsection B, we'll create a new subsection B in 7B. Mm -hmm. This is any unused funds are to go to um, the grant programs in section 7A, specifically for people who have yes. successfully completed uh, the Technical yes. Center curriculum. Yes. Okay. So then the question is, this is a huge number for this certification process. I think they probably can almost do it. They can almost do it with nothing, but they, if they have the motivation to do that. But if there are funds available, as Reva said, it would provide an incentive for them to get this work done. Mm -hmm. So. I'm actually looking at Reva and trying to figure out Sorry. how much money would be required for a certification program to get itself going. Let me see if I can. I, I don't know that level of detail is there. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. See okay. So if it's, if it's, a, if it's this three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, we're not interested in having that go to all the technical centers around the state. We're more interested in having the, the ones that want to do this to do it and have the bulk of the money go for um, incentives. Are paid internships included in this? I think they are. They yes. are. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That could be where you could use some money. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe the division of the funds should be different. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm wondering if it's like 50000 here and Six hundred thousand there. Okay. 
I have no idea, but we'll hear about it. I'll put that as a placeholder for now. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to hear about a lot, so. I'd like to see a, a chart with the point of K on it, what this final decision. I think, because when we saw this, this was a, a program where we were going to families paid a percentage of their income. Yes. For child care. Yeah. And then it didn't matter if they had one, two, or three kids in there. Yeah, we we've, we've got the the uh, CC fat. They're talking about yeah, talking CC fat. The, the sliding yeah. scale. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I mean, I'd just like to make sure that because we're only you know we're not bringing those up even to present levels. The the well, the, you're right. All right, in the market, the 2017 numbers. Well, and yeah, I'm 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 in a money committee. This is the longest up economy, and it hasn't been very up that we've seen here. We're due to do a down. I want to make sure. You know, we did something obviously a number of years ago, and haven't done anything since because the money's been tight till we reached the point where it wasn't worthwhile for people to put the kids in daycare because the cost was such a high percentage of their income. And I just want to make sure that we're, that somewhere we say that it, it is our intent that these levels continue to rise with the market or oh, that this is or that this is part of <coughs> that this is step one in what we envision as oh, like a moving towards. Can we put that in the intent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That this is viewed so as Senator Cummings has spoken. <laughs> Great. We're good with that. Yep. Well that's good. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. I mean I think it's all in our heads, but you know Well no. I mean it was it was just such yeah, I mean, to me, that is the best place for families, for the economy, for mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. that we could invest our money. Mm -hmm. And it is. But I've been here long enough to know we'll do one shot, we'll feel good, no, no, and we'll forget, forget next year that we're supposed to, because there'll be other crying needs out there. Well, so according to our little chart, for a family of three with a single parent that's earning $15 an yeah. hour, the subsidy, subsidy will go from 200, or the part that they have to pay will go from $250 to $165. That's, so that's good. a good, that's a nice step that's in the right direction. That's in the right direction. Yeah. So I'm, I am looking, I think that really the, that's the bulk of the changes. Mm -hmm. that made. The other changes are just um, conforming changes about the report back. All right, so this is good. Um, yeah. This is better. I'm sure they're going to be easier at the far end of the hall. We're we're getting better. We're not. We're like seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars away from what the house sounds like. Six hundred. Huh? Six hundred. Six hundred. Well, only six hundred. Oh. Well, and we've we've done some work, and we're our goal, of course, is we're going to be looking um, at. Reach up. We're trying to get something right, which will also in. help a lot of these. Which things. will help a lot of these people. So it's a combo. All right. So Katie, thank you very much. You're welcome.